DirecTV's choice to remove Newsmax from its lineup continues to draw outrage from conservatives across the country, which includes the president of the Re Family Research Council, Tony Perkins, who's been very outspoken on this very issue in the past. The former Louisiana state representative wrote an article blasting DirecTV in 2022 when they censored another conservative network. Perkins said this quote, if you can't beat them, silence them. And that's been the left's mantra for years. And that quote, well, let's bring in the president of the Family Research Council, Tony Perkins. Tony, welcome back to the show. It's always good to see you. All I'm right, so you have been very outspoken about this and censorship of conservatives and especially evangelical voices. So why does this particular issue of Newsmax being deplatformed for DirecTV resonate with you? Well, we've, we've had hearings in the last two days here on Capitol Hill looking at this issue of collusion with the government and these various uh, media platforms, social media platforms. And, and there's evidence. I've talked to, uh, to both members of Congress at the federal level. I've talked to state leaders, attorneys generals who have been a part of some of these lawsuits. The evidence is becoming quite clear that the government has colluded to silence voices they disagree with, conservative voices, as you pointed out. Like Newsmax is a place where evangelicals can go, as we're seeing increasing hostility toward biblical viewpoints in our society. Newsmax has been open to that. And as the former chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, a bipartisan commission, as I traveled the world looking at religious persecution, one of the first steps is to silence a, 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 a people. And if that's based on their faith or some other aspect, that creates conflict. It doesn't build unity. And when you have a president saying, you know, I'm trying to unify the nation, I'm a president of unity, bringing the country together, you can't do that when your party is working actively to silence the people they disagree with. It's been interesting to see. I will say you call a group um, called Faithful America, which labels itself as the largest online community of Christians putting faith into action for social justice. I'd actually never heard of them. And you ac accuse them of playing a key role in pressuring DirecTV to drop OAN last year. Are you aware that they played a role in trying to deplatform Newsmax? Yes, I mean, they're a George Soros funded organization. I mean, look, this is the left. They, they, they're pretty good at putting up these false fronts and saying something they're not. They're like the president who the other night accused the Republicans of wanting to defund Social Security and Medicare, even though they've said repeatedly they are not doing that. The truth never gets in their way. And so they put forth this front that they're this religious organization or this group of religious individuals trying to silence conservative voices. And, and this is extremely dangerous, Lindsay, because it's dangerous not just to conservatives, this is dangerous to the country. If, if you don't like what happened on January the 6th, and I don't, because I think we ought to have free access to the platforms in this country to have conversations, but if you start silencing people because you disagree with them, you're going to get more conflict and you're gonna get more events like that. And so I, I think it's extremely important that folks weigh in on this and talk to AT&T, DirecTV, and say, look, you need to put uh, Newsmax back on there. This is a place where a lot of people go to get information and news. And, and let me add this, Lindsay, um, this is a format in which people are not looking for only their viewpoint, they're looking for a conversation, a discussion. That's how you reach consensus in this country. And Newsmax is one of the last places that was taking place. Right, you should give exposure to more things, not less at the end of the day. But I do wanna ask you again about this Faithful America group, because they say they're the largest online community of Christians. I'm a part of that Christian community. Like I said, I'd never heard of them. So why is the left listening to them? It doesn't, it seems like they're having a great impact with not actually being that large of a group. They're not, they're not really have, they're not, they don't have that much influence. What they do though, is they give cover to these entities that want to go along with it. And so they can use that as an excuse. Like, well, this religious group said, well, we should not have uh, this program on our cable platform because uh, they're not fair or they are uh, hostile or they're a hate group or whatever it is. But that's simply cover for these left-leaning corporate organizations that are already woke and they're just looking uh, for something to, uh, to provide a smokescreen of legitimacy to their decision. Mm, seems like it. Tony, I always appreciate your voice and thank you for speaking up on this for conservatives and evangelicals around the country and the world. Thanks, Lindsay.